Hi, good evening. Yeah, hi, good evening. Uh, hi, Anasuya. I, I hope I'm pronouncing your name right. Uh, yeah, Anasuya. Yeah. So where are you from? Uh, I'm basically from Bangalore, India. And what about you? Uh, I'm currently, yeah, yeah, I'm currently a student in third year from uh, NIT Chilanda. From? Huh? Uh, NIT Chilanda. Oh, nice. So is it uh, is this is um, mainly focusing on students or like uh, anyone? This particular. This, are you asking regarding this meet? Yeah. Uh, so this meet is a uh, like a, we have a weekly meeting going on. So this is regarding the onboarding task force which we are, which we are kind of like really forming, which focuses mainly on improving documentations and other stuff about hyperledger and other things. So it's open for everyone actually. Okay, okay, no, that I read it. So I just wanted to check whether it is for uh, experienced people or only for freshers. That's that's what I wanted to ask. Yeah, it's open for everyone. Yeah. So uh, are you currently using Hyperledger or maybe you are working somewhere? Uh, yeah, actually, I'm founder of uh, Bini World Innovations Private Limited. Okay, that's nice. So like, uh, we... Uh, we are uh, working with, uh, we are just starting to work with Hyperledger Fabric. Actually, like uh, in Fabric, uh, we have the RAF consensus right now. So like uh, we are uh, uh, working on the core. So okay. BFP, like that is what we are uh, mainly focusing on, Bini BFP. That is the BFP that we are uh, working on currently. That's very really nice. Actually. So it, I didn't get that name. It was Bini World Innovations or Bini something? World Innovations Private Limited. I will send my uh, LinkedIn yeah, yeah. Uh, ID in the chat. Yeah. Hello. I hope you got it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, I did get it. Yeah. So hi, David. Hey, how are you? I'm fine. How are you? Yeah. Good. 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 Yeah, Bobby said she can't make it today, but I was about to say John should be here, and I see John's here now, but not set up on audio yet. Hey, John. Hey, David. How are you doing this morning? Good. Good. How are you? Oh, doing great. Good to catch up with everyone. And I see that. I'm yeah. just gonna say I see that Ben accepted our invite. If he doesn't show up in a minute or two, I'll ping him. Okay, yeah, it would be wonderful to catch up with Ben. And what I really want to do is make sure we're coordinating with Ben on any recommendations we give, especially with onboarding work that we're gonna be for doing. Sure. For sure. For mentorship. sure. Mentorship. So let me go ahead and just pull up some of this here. I see we have a good group uh, joining us today, so thanks for everyone. And if you want to add your name to either the onboarding uh, task force or the documentation standards, let me know. Let me let me just go ahead and get into that, and then I can put it up on the screen here. But let's give David a couple of minutes here to see if Ben will join us. And maybe hey, it looks like he just joined. Ben. Hello, everyone. Good. Hey Ben, thanks for joining. My pleasure, thank you. Hey Ben, thanks a lot for joining us this morning and we really appreciate it. And as I was explaining to the group here before you jumped on is, you know, for this task force where we have basically the onboarding and also the documentation task force, when we're going through with our mentorships, we definitely wanna make sure that any recommendations that we, you know, create or content that we create is compatible with your web strategy for the hyperledger.org website. So that's why I thought it would be good to have you join us early on in the process and maybe talk a little bit about what you're doing with the redesign of the website so that what we're doing with mainly that start here uh, URL that we can get it right and make sure that it's compatible with the new design. 
Sure. Thanks, John. Um, this music to my ears. I just uh, literally just finished uh, listening to your previous um, session, I think, on the uh, 17th. Yes. Um, which is, yeah, which is great. Um, uh, great to hear that uh, this is happening. And it's uh, especially for me personally, you know, I'm, I'm sometimes I feel like I'm swimming alone in this ocean of data. So I'm more than happy to get everyone involved here and um, uh, some of the points that that I, I can hopefully help touch on um, to shed some more light on on a few things. Um, maybe uh, it might be start. Uh, would it be helpful if I just gave you a kind of quick overview on on where I'm at with everything? Yeah, that'd be great. That, that'd be wonderful, Ben. So maybe I will uh, share my screen here for a second. Perfect. I'll also just queue up to start here as well, Ben, and we can talk about that after you go through your presentation. Great, thanks. So when I, I, I came on board uh, just over a year ago now, I think, um, and one of the first things I did, um, uh, which I had mentioned in the previous meeting, was uh, persona development. Uh, and this had been done a little bit previously, but not really fleshed out in terms of uh, the the multiple personas that we that we've uh, that we're talking to, and so basically I put this document together. I'm happy to share it as well, uh, and it's something that I would love to continue developing um, because it is quite uh, comprehensive, as you all mentioned previously as well. Um, so what I, what I did before we just had two personas: the one developer and one uh, business executive. But now yeah. I've kind of broken. I've broken it down. Here's the sector overview, and I've broken it down into the uh, into the maintainer, uh, uh, the contributor, uh, the new developer. Um, so, and also one thing I would love to do is add uh, a female persona. I'm not sure whether that's a new developer or a maintainer or contributor, but. Um, Obviously, during, when I started this document, I was looking at the uh, the analytics, obviously, uh, I benchmarked everything at the beginning of the year, all of the channels, all of the website. Um, and the, the first thing that I noticed was the website was basically falling over. It's, it's very, very low performing. Uh, I think it's, there's a page load speed of uh, over 12 seconds. Uh, there, yep. are, there are multiple, I can't, remember how many exactly but there are multiple 404 pages which are getting spammed by bots you name it it's it's a nightmare so that and that was part of the whole uh the the revamp and re redoing the website that was the reason for doing that is because it's really hampering the onboarding process for uh for for new users hitting the site who are essentially um bouncing um and as you can see here this is uh the the uh, uh last year from from today uh the good news obviously is we've got uh 909 000, uh users hitting the site up at 18.9 percent from last year uh 12 percent of those users are new sessions new sessions and 33 percent are new users um but unfortunately our bounce rate is is continuing to climb uh 67 percent uh, last year 77 percent this year so uh and we really want to be in the uh you know for tech kind of content community benchmarks we want to be in the 50 to 60 percent range is the goal um so so the, these are the these are the kind of data points i was looking at and uh um obviously the, the biggest point is is that we need a, a, a high speed fast performing website with a load time of under three seconds globally um and that's to ensure that we can that we can a uh, onboard people properly and take advantage of of the uh, the huge amount of traffic that are currently just hitting and, and dropping off here. Um, and then the the next step is obviously I looked at the uh, I looked at the first thing I did was turn on the demographics on the analytics which weren't previously on. Uh, so happy that now that we actually have some decent demographic data to map to uh, our developer. Uh, personas and interestingly the uh we've got uh 27.8 percent are uh female 72.2 are male 
with the highest age ranges between 25 and 34, um, and then dropping off uh, by just almost 10%, 35 to 44. Um, and then the next thing I looked at, or oh, uh, you know, lots of data to dive through here, but uh, uh, affinity interests and other such things. Um, and then, of course, I moved on to uh, user flow. And I'm not by any means a, uh, a UX uh, UI specialist, but uh, I'm, I'm fairly up on, on analyzing a lot of the data here. So um, here we can see, again, this is quite useful to know in terms of the, the personas, um, United States and China and India, Indonesia. I think a lot of the Indonesian traffic is, is a lot of spam bots hitting the site because they're hitting most of the 404 pages. Um, sure. Mexico. Um, and, and we can see things obviously like, you know, a large majority of traffic is going to fabric. Um, but of course, we've got 78% of those uh, sessions are bounced. So we're looking when we're looking at non-bounced sessions, we get a clearer picture. And Ben, one uh, quick question, because I think this is, I mean, you you probably heard since thanks for listening to the earlier call, but I, I to me, the whole challenge here is, yeah, how do people flow, not just on the website, but throughout all our yes. web properties. So just to confirm, this is just the www.hyperledger.org data? Correct. Okay, great. And, and then I think just to preview what we're interested in is like, how do we get people from like the website to the relevant place on the wiki or the relevant place on GitHub or, you know, whatever. So yeah, it'd be great to get your thoughts on how we get like the user flow mapped out on all of our websites, not just the, the main one. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and I think this is, uh, it's it's this data here that, that I'm most interested in, in that respect. And also uh, in the mobile traffic, um, which is 34% of, of these, uh, of total sessions. So uh, that could be a lot higher because um, nowadays more than uh, 50 to 60% of most sites are, are mobile traffic. So we wanna make sure the site's optimized um, for all devices, especially mobile. Um, sure and, and what we what we can what we can see here obviously is you know as as expected fabrics uh, driving a lot of the traffic i think the walmart case study was was one of the highest uh, engaged pieces of content on the site for example uh and then uh then then we can kind of gauge the flow here but i think what what i would need most help with um is you know uh this is what people are doing with the with the current site which is quite convoluted, lots of uh, uh, way too much te text, text heavy. Uh, in general, the average uh, time on the site is two, minute, uh, two minutes 40. Um, so uh, David and I have uh, rearranged the, the top level navigation. And I, I think somebody else mentioned um, some heat mapping. We yep. don't have heat. That map was what I mentioned, yep. Great. Yeah, so we don't we don't have a heat map installed, but uh, I have been looking at analytics, and obviously from experience, you, uh, once you go below the fold, you get a large. You know, most people are uh, above the fold. You get a very large drop off once you um, uh, once traffic goes below the fold, of around seventy percent on average. Um, yep. So the big question is, uh, the big challenge was how can we essentially bring all the elements together, get people to to where they want to go, and that was. Uh, uh, decided well the uh, I spoke with the web team and the LF design team and uh, we decided to go uh, with a mega menu so here is uh, just to give you an overview and these are all just basic designs uh, in sure. process here but essentially what would happen now instead of um, having to go through these uh, uh, this this hierarchy which is Again, not not really that clear enough. We're going mega menu, so you hover over about, and then you break you, everything is broken down here into the yep. whole fold at the top of the page. And this is great because it's a lot it's a lot cleaner. It's it's, it's uh, you can also add featured content. And so this is the about page. Uh, the projects menu, for example, goes to the new projects page with the uh, projects in order here. And for and the first nice. question for the first section, for example, is question is 
you know, historically, fabric's been the number one uh, uh, um, journey point two, touch point two. Do we want that to be the case? Or do we want, uh, at the moment, we thought, well, we want the new project page to, to be the, the main landing page. But do we want the projects in order? Do we want to give more? Because uh, obviously, areas or, you know, the top projects here are going to get more clicks than yeah i think it's totally okay to have featured projects versus graduated projects but that's a detail but i mean just as i love the mega menu because and again you probably heard this on the call you know one of the things we've been talking about in the group is reducing the number of clicks people have to click yes. you know to take to get to where they want to go this definitely removes a click uh you yes. go directly to fabric for example yes the two two or three clicks to, to everything is the goal and of course, here we have uh, in participate um, very clear uh, links to all the external um, properties and um, groups, regional chapters. Um, I think this makes makes much more sense, a lot cleaner. Um, again, uh, in terms of uh, hierarchy here. I think that I think well, David and I, uh, I think we've done quite a good job so far in terms of ranking this in terms of what's going to be most. Uh, and we also we looked at the flow uh, on this page in particular to order this. So we have a kind of general, we have a good idea in terms of what people are uh, wanting to click on most, obviously. Sure. Uh, the use menu uh, again. <clears throat> slightly reorganized and the, the learn menu slightly reorganized I believe. yeah uh, the blog and the news so yeah that's that kind of gives you the, the general idea of of the mega menu which i which hopefully i think solves the problem of the main navigation issue with the current website obviously the first issue is is the performance uh, the second issue is is the navigation to to everything. So, um, yeah, that's basically where we're at at the moment with with the with the navigation. But in terms of actual flow, uh, we're doing a detailed kind of uh, user journey flow um, past that point um, is is definitely where I'd appreciate input. And if anybody has any. Um, queries or suggestions would, would love all that because that's this is basically um where my <laughs> where my attention and capacity stops because I'm essentially working through all the, the website structure and providing the content yeah. and all that kind of stuff. And I think that's a good partnership with this group. Yeah, maybe this group is like how do we handle the handoff from the website into the other parts of the community and continue that flow in a in a reasonable way, right? Yes. And I think one one of the big questions for me is um uh, what's what's not what's maybe still not that clear is um and if i click on our new home page which again is just a, a mock-up to get an idea of things um uh one thing we've heard from the board is obviously we want we want members front and center sure uh, this yep. this will be the scrolling uh member logos um some photos of the members at events uh, then we then we're featuring the the projects, the graduating projects, um, case studies, and then uh, here is something uh, I think we can we can definitely look at um, working on uh, in terms of adding the end users, but also what's the I think my big question is what's the what's the big incentive for a new contributor? Is it um, you know, rather than just like, hey, become a contributor, do, you know, look at this, look at that, you know, what is it? Uh, is it, hey, here's here's your first set of bugs to get into, to get your teeth into, right? Or, hey, here's a uh, something to participate in immediately, so that that they can be onboarded uh, in the most efficient manner without having to get too lost in documentation and stuff like that, right? Yeah, and that's where the start here stuff comes in, and maybe I don't know, Nico or others could like talk about. What their goal with start here is and that's always been my concern with start here i think it's been great but i just don't know how people find it right like because it's not necessarily integrated or linked to from other places so maybe that's what you're talking about like what is the next step or how do people get into something specific right yes 
Uh, and I, and I'm, I'm aware that, again, uh, obviously the large majority um, of the community are um, uh, maintainers and contributors. Um, so uh, they're, and uh, from what I've heard, they're not necessarily coming back to the site that often to look for stuff or do stuff uh, in particular, but maybe they, they, but maybe they should. Um, uh, and I'm not quite sure how that what what the best way to to do that is. And that is a good point. I don't know if that's captured on your personas. Sorry, you were sharing it earlier, but maybe I just missed it. But yeah, that maybe that's a good thing. Like, what web property does a given persona go to? Because I suspect you're right. A maintainer doesn't go to the website so much; they go to GitHub, right? You right. know, they they probably go to the wiki and GitHub far more than they go to the website. And so, different right. personas go to different properties, right? Yeah. And, and I, I, don't, love, yeah, I don't see if that's captured or not, but maybe it's worth doing. Definitely. Uh, I would love for for this, for this to be developed a bit more. Um, I mean, we've got kind of, you know, marketing communication stuff here, which is great and helpful to make sure that our messaging is on point. But in terms of actual uh, communication preferences, I also actually did a, a quite a, a large map of all of our comms channels, uh, which which are which is, again, quite uh, quite large um but and i've seen uh, other designers and ux specialists kind of draw you know pathways and arrows all over that to, you know to, to to make sure that uh and and do full user journeys from uh throughout all the website properties uh if if i'm not saying we necessarily need to do that but certainly it would be um if somebody's up for doing that it would be uh it would be really really useful um, because because we also have uh, uh, analytics tracking um, behind not only the website uh, but wiki as well um, obviously not to do anything um, nefarious but just to understand the traffic flow better um, sure. so that, that, is, that, is, that is one piece that we could certainly work on a, a bit more as well agreed and I don't think we know the traffic flow beyond the website that much I, I mean i've been i know i pinged you on slack last week but we got a question from one of the sig chairs about confluence traffic and we didn't really have a good answer for him and so right. maybe what you're talking about just so you know this group is working had submitted a mentorship proposal for somebody who can come in and help with this project so maybe that's something you and the mentee can work on together maybe doing the integration on the you know the analytics back end to get the workflow across awesome. multiple yep. websites Right. So yeah, John, that would could be a good task for us on our Minty task list, like figure out the Google Analytics stuff with you know Ben. Oh yeah, no, that's great. And I think that would be something that I'd be more than glad to work with the Menti on to make sure it's all wired up correctly and we can track, you know, flow through the entire both the wiki and the primary uh, website. And then if they're going to link off to another repository, we can you know, make sure that that's all tracking through. Right. And probably just to end off is, uh, this is this is quite a great, um, uh, some milestones and top level results from last year, just to give you an overview of, of the total uh, community traffic. A lot of the social traffic is is going, uh, social media is, is driving a lot of traffic to the website. Um, as you can see, it's, uh, it's up 76% on last year. Um, the YouTube channel again driving a, a large amount of traffic, uh, the fastest growing channel, and in general, uh, the website has over a uh, million um, users. So we really want to capture those and make sure that they're not dropping off immediately. What one, one question I'd have on that, Ben, is do you have a breakdown of organic traffic and direct navigation traffic that are coming into the website? Yes. Uh, so yeah, here you can see uh, direct um, <clears throat> the change in direct is up 160. Then yeah, organic so is, people are. That's yeah. good. Okay, yeah, go ahead. Awareness is certainly up, uh, and a lot of the work we've done with the PR firm uh, analytics is that yeah, our, our general awareness for enterprise grade blockchain tech is we're we're, we're pole position. Organic traffic is down. Uh, again, that's probably because of the low website performance again. Um, but actually, uh, our YouTube channel is driving a, most of the organic awareness and reach. Uh, so um, 
and social is, is is down is down a bit as well. So these are these are the the kind of metrics I really uh, want to see the new website massively increase. Yeah, I'll just make a couple of comments on organic traffic, Ben. Hmm. So one of them is because you have so much content that's already indexed by Google, I would yeah. make sure that if your redesign gets rid of certain URLs that they have all have 301 redirects to relevant content when you yeah. launch the new website. Yes, that is a, that is a task that uh, we're aware of, uh, as well as um, we've already got a massive spreadsheet with all the, all, all the 404s and the redirects necessary. So yeah, thanks, that's a good point. Okay, and the other thing I'll just bring up, and then I know Tracy has some wonderful questions, is are you familiar with Google's Lighthouse? You, you know that uh, project that they have, and within that they have what's called page speed insights? Yes, that may be uh, something to, to look at too, because I, I was looking at that and it looked like the main thing was a lot of uh, unused JavaScript is what that was flagging for the website. Yes, I, I have done an initial uh, page speed insights report on that. Uh, happy, I'm happy to share as well. Um, and again, yeah, this is something we can definitely uh, in, that will definitely improve with the new site. I mean, I think that the problem with the WordPress site is it's been added to for so many years and there's so many plugins and random bits. Sure. Of, so, um, yeah, a lot, a lot of plugins can slow it down for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and the new site is built on uh, HubSpot tech. So so that should be pretty, um, that should really help to improve performance too. Great. Okay, let's let's jump over and let's uh, have Tracy talk about her two wonderful questions she posted in the chat. I think Tracy, maybe if you just want to go through those with the group, we can uh, address those with Ben here. Sure. So when I was when we you were going through the menus, Ben, um, I noticed under use um, you have training and certifications, uh, which I think previously was under learn. And I personally would look for that under learn as a yeah. uh, as an individual. So if we expect people to also look for it under use, maybe we can have it in both places. Okay. Uh, noted. And then my second comment, I guess, was on the Google Analytics. I'm wondering if uh, if we have a common key uh, analytics key that exists for hyperledger um the documentation template actually has a place for that and love to be able to specify our common hyperledger one versus a specific one for uh different documentation that people might create sure which i actually have been using uh looker studio i'm not sure if you're familiar with but um to create various uh dashboards if that's is that the same thing or do you just want a basic analytics? Uh, well, I guess uh, that's that's really the question is how do we make sure that any sort of documentation that people create is uh, analytics that you can get to uh, for understanding kind of where the traffic flows to? Uh, okay, sure. Uh, so for example, I've got like a, uh, a blog and case study dashboard that only shows you blog and case study analytics. Um, but we can we can create these dashboards for any pages or documents on the site. And do we use a common analytics key? I mean, what's the what's the mechanism? So um, so what I'm thinking is that if we create documentation for say cacti or bevel or fabric or whatever, right? That we if we provide a common hyperledger key, then all of those analytics can be viewed by uh, the folks in the hyperledger staff to understand like, okay, people come to the fabric documentation from the website or they come to it from GitHub or they come to it from wherever, right? Yeah, I see. At the moment, I think only internal hyperledger emails have will have access to the analytics. But let me look into that because this may uh, the look at dashboards might be the solution for external viewing. 
Yeah, and I think that one thing like you're referring to the UA codes, the old ones, and I'm sure then you're moving over to GA4. I don't know if you've already moved over to GA4 at this point or you're still using UA codes. Uh, but the main thing is, yeah, you could do like, you know, dash one, dash two, dash three for any of the GA4 codes to do exactly what Tracy's looking for here. Okay. Got it. But I think that's a great point, Tracy, because, you know, visibility in the analytics tells a story, you know, it shows user engagement, shows, you know, how many people are visiting the pages and, you know, what's the length of engagement. So that's all great. So just, just so I'm clear, who would be, uh, uh, who would they, who would the codes be for exactly? It sounds like, do you just want to drop it into the head of each project that Tracy has mentioned there. So just make sure that whatever individual Hyperledger project has, you know, the GA code on those pages so that they can get visibility into it. And especially for people who are, you know, the maintainers would need to know, you know, are they getting greater traffic over time? What are the most important pages that people are visiting? And just, you know, given as much statistical data as they need to see okay. what you know what people are doing on that particular project cool i've noted that and we'll um run that by daniela asap perfect thanks tracy All right, Ben, well, that's wonderful. Uh, and if you want, I can just kind of pull up the page speed insights if we want to look at that for a second, or I don't, I don't know if you ran that recently, but we can just kind of look at something that we can look to improve as well as we help you out on this project. Yeah, I appreciate that. So I'll just go ahead and just pull it up really quick here and then we can just take a quick spin through it. I'll, I'll launch it on mobile first, then we can look at desktop. Okay. Okay. Does that come through for everyone? So I would say the main thing that I was looking at here as far as, you know, just things that are going to be in the red is really that page load speed. And I think if you address the page load speed with the new design, that's really going to help out your performance as far as Google's concerned. And I think it'll also help with the bounce rate because then people won't be wondering if the page is going to load and they'll go right into the content. But if you look down here, you know, these, 4.2 seconds, 5.7 seconds, you know, that's, you know, pretty beefy page load times and whatever we can do to reduce that would be great. And then it's really about that unused JavaScript that's coming in from the WordPress plugins. And even if there's any plugins, I think that are active that maybe be able to be deactivated, that would definitely help as well. Yeah, this, the, uh, those pesky plugins, unfortunately, most of the site, all, all of the um, kind of key elements like the blog and the <clears throat> tables and stuff, they're all plugins. So currently, that the only way to, yeah, the, the new site. Yeah, no, I, I agree. And that's just maybe something to review with your web developer, just to see yeah. if there's anything that they can do to maybe, you know, like this defer off screen images is always good. Just say, yeah. you know, we're going to paint the page and then pull in these other images after the page is rendered for the user. Right. And then some of that next gen image format, you know, like image uh, formats that Google recommends and they have their uh, next gen format that they push. So that's about it. Uh, awesome.
And yeah, this is this is I've got a meeting uh, actually set up. Uh, I'm in consensus next week, but the week after I'm meeting with the web team to go through all this. So good timing. Thanks. Yeah, no problem. And I think you're doing a wonderful job. And I think the new mega menu looks perfect and the new redesign is going to work great. And awesome. it's just, you know, we're here to jump in and help you and also work on, you know, getting people right to the content quickly to make sure that, you know, they're engaged and moving forward versus bouncing off the website. Awesome. Thank you. The uh, in people um, helping out with the persona development, um, would that be possible? I think that's that's one one of the key pieces that I definitely appreciate the most help on. Yeah, I would say 100% that the onboarding mentorship can help with the persona development and give you, you know, several more personas that we want to look at that you've identified in that first slide that you showed. And right. then you just let us know, you know, which personas we're developing for you and we'll make them look just like your other persona development, which you already did a great job on. So that's wonderful. Yeah, Finn, for sure. If there's anything this group and then the mentee when they start can help with, I mean, we're, we're a resource for you. So yeah, if there's specific other tasks too, let us know. Okay, great, appreciate it. Okay, and then uh, I think, Tracy, do you have anything else you wanna add on what you put in for your environment key for Google Analytics here? Nope. Okay, perfect. Okay, well, thanks, Ben, for joining us. And, you know, it's always better to get ahead of this than it is for us to come in later and, you know, the ship's already left the station. Or yes, the train's indeed. already left the station, yeah. Okay, good. All right, this, uh, let's... Go ahead. Sorry, John. Is this, uh, is this task force something that's ongoing on a on a regular basis, or what's the? Yeah, I it, it is weekly, Ben. I just added you to today because I didn't know if you wanted the weekly. You want me to add you to the the? It's the same call in. I mean, you can just add this to your calendar, or I could invite you to the series versus just today. That'd be great. Thanks. All right. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Glad you want to come. Okay, perfect. So let's just take a look here. Let's see if I move that other tab I had open here. Okay, here's kind of the onboarding task force tab. And I guess it looks like we also have a new person join us, Anna Suaya and Elena. Look like they're both new to the call. So Anna Suaya. You want to go first as far as talking a little bit about your background and your interest in this group? Hi, John. Uh, I'm happy to be part of this group. And this is Anasuya, Anasuya Perez Nissen. Uh, so I have given my LinkedIn uh, ID. If it, uh, it is the first message on today's chat. So basically, I am the founder of a company, let's like a startup name. Bini World Innovations Private Limited. So we are uh, like a startup, like uh, just getting into the research phase. So we are working in uh, blockchain. So we'll be happy to be part of and collaborate with you. Okay, that's wonderful. Uh, thanks for joining us. And I guess the task force kind of has two focuses right now. One is around the onboarding side of the Hyperledger community, and the other one's around the documentation side of the community. Is there one of those two project areas you find of interest the most, or what would you like to do to really you know, get involved? And we're glad to bring you in on either side of that, or both. I'm happy to be part of both, because like uh, uh, I do some hands-on experience with Hyperledger also, like, and it is always like, uh, I'm basically a hardcore academician, uh, like, um, and uh, entrepreneurship is uh, kind of long-term goal, like, it's a dream uh, to help out people, and that's the reason I started the company, and of course, it is, uh, like, I'm a PhD in computer science also, 
published a lot of papers. So I will be always happy to help others learn something. So both in documentation as well as on onboarding, I will be happy to help with that. That's wonderful to hear and welcome to the group. And what I'll do is after we're at, done introducing everyone, we're gonna go over and just take a look at some of the updates on the task force. So I'll add your name to that if you're interested and uh, welcome to the group. Yeah, thank you. And I will wait at the end of the call. Okay, and Elena, do you wanna give a quick introduction? Yeah, hello. Uh, I've actually joined the last week's call already. And, okay. Uh, just a couple of words on my background. Um, I'm uh, leading the documentation practice at a company that is called Exact Pro. We are in software testing and uh, we create uh, software for um, testing purposes. So we work uh, in the financial sector and we create some uh, automated uh, solutions for functional non-functional testing. And uh, my team uh, has been working with uh, documenting the platforms that we create and uh, maybe already from this description, it is uh, understandable that out of the two workforces, the documentation was one is uh, most interest to me. Um, my um, my team is still uh, in its inception stage, so we are trying to understand the uh, community like practices, like. Um, best practices approach and uh, I'm really excited about uh, what Tracy does with the uh, with her uh, template uh, presented uh, and explained uh, last week and uh, today we also <laughs> mentioned uh, about it so uh, at this point uh, I would like to be closely <laughs> monitoring what you guys are doing and if I identify any area where I can contribute I also will be glad to thank you Fantastic. Glad to have you join us again. And so I'm just John, your audio is going in and out a little bit. Okay, is my audio good now or not? Seems fine now. Okay, yeah, I think it was just I was doing this transition. Everyone can see my screen. Yep. Okay, perfect. So let's just go ahead and if you want to be added to this project, so let's start. Uh, I'm going to put NSI on here. And do you have an email that you'd like to give us that we can add as part of being on the onboarding side of this? Task yeah, force. just now I have a message that, see, I have a registered email ID with the Hyperledger community, which is binibft at uh, biniworld.com. I just messaged. In the chat? Yeah. Perfect. Is it uh, B-I-N-I-B-F-T at yeah, Bini Biniworld? B yes, Perfect. at biniworld.com. And any comment as far as your role that you want to put out there into being a part of this, what you're most interested in or some background component? Uh, let's see. Like uh, if, if you want me to develop some learning material or like uh, some content, like whatever is required for onboarding, that I can uh... front end content development. Is that what you're thinking? Yeah. Okay, and we can always change that. Or you know, you can go in there with your Linux Foundation ID and change it. Okay, and then let's also put on uh, Elena. So Elena, you. You're not interested so much in the onboarding side as much as you want to just be on the documentation side. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. Okay, I'll I'll pull that one up in a bit. Devish, uh, Devesh, do you want to uh, 
had your name here on the onboarding side? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I would love to be a part of the onboarding members. That's cool. Okay, great. I'm just going to put you down here and maybe can you give me your email or post it in the chat? Yeah, I'll post it in. Okay, perfect. I got that. Okay. And then what would you like to have as kind of a synopsis of what you want to be involved with in the onboarding side? Uh, can I know the options where I can be involved? Uh, like uh, what are, what are else, else things are there uh, in which I can contribute? I think that there's a lot of things like analytics that we talked about with Ben. Uh, there's definitely persona development. And I would say that there's also any type of UI UX feedback that we can give to Ben as well. Um, or or like the other be... thing that I think could be good would be flow. So basically, you know, look at the mapping of the website and, you know, give recommendations around user flow. Uh, okay, I'm comfortable with that. But uh, also, can I go for a front end developer, which uh, Mr. Nico is going for, for the UI UX development, as I, ho I have uh, web development skills? Perfect. Well, that's super valuable. Yeah. Okay. So UI UX. You have any interest in doing anything around the personas or the analytics side? Um, can you please elaborate on what on what I'm Sure. Per persona is it's developing a persona of you know somebody who uses the website who's a member of the hyperledger community. So they can be like a person who's a developer person who's a contributor, person who's a business uh, driven person. You know, it, it's kind of who comes to the website and kind of just framework, give them a little bit about what their persona might look like. It's, and it's just a generic persona as you know, this type of person uses the Hyperledger website. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure. Uh, I'll, I'll look into it. You can add me in that also. Okay. Persona development, and are you okay with also looking at analytics, Google Analytics, GA? Um, I don't have any experience with that, but I'll definitely would love to uh, be part of that also. I'll just put you down without that on there then. If that's not of interest and you haven't used GA, then I'll just say let's do that for now. Okay, let's do one more quick thing here. So, Niku, you're already on here. You want to add anything or change anything on your uh, comment profile. No, no, everything is fine. Actually. Okay. All right. Uh, let's take a quick look over at the other uh, item. Then I'm going to get out of here. I'm going to go ahead and save this out. And then I'm going to go into the documentation side. And then let's just put who's going to be on that a little bit here real quick. So I'm going to start off here with Elena. And Elena, what's your email? Perfect. Uh, Thank you very yes, much. I just Which one would you chat. prefer? Would you would you want both in there, or would you want your Gmail yes, or yes. your exact row? Uh, both are okay. Both are good. Okay. Yep. Let's go ahead and add both. And as far as documentation, what would be the way that you would look to? contribute here? Would you want to develop standards around? And, you know, if you saw Tracy's wonderful run through on that framework mm -hmm. that she developed, you know, I think that's definitely going to be kind of the gold standard for adoption. Would you want to mm -hmm. do anything as far as reviewing that or adding to that? 
Uh, yes, I believe that uh, reviewing and sharing my feedback is uh, something that uh, is realistic at this point. But going further, if I feel I'm more involvement, uh, I believe it can be expanded. Okay. And let's see if we have anybody else here. That's pretty much it. Okay, uh, I'm going to go Tracy ahead and Tracy herself this. on the list? Sorry. Well, yeah, Tra Tracy, can be, <laughs> Tracy can be on any list she wants at any level. So Tracy, do you okay. want to be on the list? I'm, I'm, I'm always figuring you're on every list where you want to participate. And I don't know if Tracy's still with us here. She might have had to drop off. Nope, she dropped off. But I think it's fine. Tracy can add herself to the list anytime she wants, and she's welcome to be a part of everything. Hey, John, you can add me also. I have uh, given my full name and uh, email ID again. Okay, let me just go ahead and see who is that that was letting me know that. Uh, this is Anasuya. Okay, and you would like to be on here as well? Yeah. Perfect. Thanks for telling me that. Let me just go ahead and add you quickly to this again, and then you'll be all set to go. Full name and uh, mail ID. Okay, I'm going to just go back up here and pull your email. The same Diddy World email is the one you want? Yeah, that's the one. And I have a message, to, a message in the group again. And what would you like to have kind of your description of what you want to be involved with here? Okay, what are the options? I would say that uh, reviewing the framework that Tracy developed and making sure that you have any feedback or comments around that core framework, or if it's working with any of the individual projects to see if they need, had any needs for help with developing do documentation. So sure. you know, reach out to individual projects that are approved and running. Or alternatively, updating any of the existing content that is out of date on the documentation. I yeah, both another... are fine. Both are fine. I'll be uh, like, I can spend some time. Okay, so updating content. Yeah, you can uh, put that updating documentation. Content. And, uh, uh, the other one that giving comments and uh, connecting with the groups that also review can. reviewing uh, documentation framework. Sure. Okay, great. We can take a look at anything else that we want to review here. You know, I've just been fielding a lot of questions from people that are interested in applying to the mentorship uh, since the last time we had our call. And that's really been what's, you know, driving forward what we've got going on with the onboarding process. And then also I had a request from Bobby who wasn't able to join us today due to a conflict where we might potentially be moving this call to Wednesday. So, I will make sure that you know we keep up with everyone and please track the Hyperledger calendar if you want to stay engaged with this group because it might be shifting to Wednesday in the upcoming week. So David, do you have any thoughts around that time frame there? I think that the time we kind of landed on was a half hour window. I think that yeah, would be I mean I would just say forward. I would just say let's make sure it's not disruptive. We have a, you know, we're building up a nice audience here on this time. You know, let's just if it works for everybody, that's great. Let's just, you know, confirm before we do it. Okay, yeah. And and I guess that's that's what I'll say with the group is maybe I'll just ask the group here. Does this time work well for everyone? And is it something that we want to be more interested in sticking to this time frame versus shifting to Wednesday around a similar time frame? Yeah, both are good for me. 
Both are good for you. Okay. Uh, Niku, what's good for you? Uh, Monday is good for me. Yeah. Monday is good. Okay. It's a better day. Okay. Uh, how about Devesh? Uh, actually, for me also, Monday is good because of my university. Okay, perfect. Yeah, good, good to know, because I think if we've got a good group here, like David said, we might want to just maintain our trajectory. Elena, what are your thoughts around Monday versus Wednesday? Uh, it doesn't matter, so both are okay. Okay, great. Okay, well, whatever we do, we'll make sure that the group is well-versed in what's happening and we can go from there. And I guess, David, is there anything else that you think we should cover here? Or are we okay with wrapping up today based on the great presentation by Ben? For today, no, there's nothing. Yeah, the Ben, yeah, talking to Ben was the main thing that I thought was on our list, but so nothing else for me. Okay, well, I think that's pretty much it for me as well. And I figure we'll give you back six minutes of your time today. Great. And I hope everyone has a wonderful week and reach out to me if you need anything. And we're glad to keep this rolling forward and we'll catch up next week. Yeah, thanks for running the call, John. And thanks everyone for joining. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Nice uh, call. Good day, well. everyone. Yeah, thank take you. care. Bye. Bye.